Hey guys, what's going on? It looks like Sony is selling Spider-Man as an entertainment right back to whoever. Um, based on the headline of this article, I wonder if Sony will contemplate selling Spider-Man back to Marvel. It's a question for me that to me that goes back since that god awful Amazing Two came out in theaters. Say what you guys will about Spider-Man Homecoming, and I do have problems with it too. It's a much better movie than the last appearances on Spider-Man in film over the years. I think I'm going to use this video to talk about my hate and love on the films. You know, I suppose I could start at the beginning with my Spider-Man movie history. Comics, we'll talk about another time. I don't know how many people are looking forward to that one. Um, but hopefully it will be a, a lot. There will be a lot for me to say with the recent news regarding a certain writer leaving the Amazing Spider-Man title. I don't know how much in-depth I want to go with these movies, because much better people than me, like, like, better people than me have critiqued these films to death. All five Spider-Man movies. I guess something I could say in regards to my beginnings with these movies. When I was a little kid, all the way through my teenage years, I saw the original Spider-Man trilogy by Sam Raimi. To me, they were good for a time, and then Spider-Man 3 just happened, and all in all, the films have aged more or less okay, but not that great. The amazing movies with Mark Webb came out as soon as I got older, past my teenage years. The first one was okay, but the second one was just god-awful. Sony wanted to bank on the Avengers with with terrible writing like that? Um, uh, how do I say this? Like... Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man 1 came out at the same time as Avengers did. The the first Avengers. And and um, Amazing 1 was okay, but Amazing 2 was just god-awful with the goblin that was Harry Osborn, the ultimate rhino, uh, the rhino in a mechanical suit, not the actual, not the, le the more legitimate rhino. And what was the other villain again? Goblin, Rhino, and Electro. Oh yeah. Oh, by by uh, Jamie Fox. But no, and nobody talks about that anymore. I notice. In the case of either director making these movies, how is it that Sony can make such a terrible product with Spider-Man being the only hero in his universe, and yet the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon series elevates the superhero uh, uh, superhero genre based on those movies? If you ask me, guys, I think Greg Wiseman should be doing films instead of Sam Raimi or Mark Webb. <laughs> anyway, the Marvel Studio Spider-Man. Let's talk about that one. I, I quite enjoyed Spider-Man Homecoming. It's not Spider-Man 2, almost Oscar-worthy, but it's not Amazing Spider-Man 2, worst movie uh, capable of winning a prize. I don't know. Like, it's not the... It, Spider-Man Homecoming, it's not the worst Spider-Man movie. Is it the best? Hard for me to say, but it's not far from it. For one, I'm glad that I have an excuse to stop bashing Spider-Man on film with this treatment, uh, like, with the treatment of Spider-Man overall and in other mediums in the last decade being, like, uh, most of Spider-Man in the last dec decade has been terrible anyway, from comics to TV shows to movies, and don't worry, as for comics, we'll get into that very soon. Uh, I'm looking at you, Dan, well, okay, uh, I don't want to be rude, but I I'm looking at Dan Slott as I say this. There's, there's good points and bad points to be discussed in a future video, but when it comes to Spider-Man Homecoming and Civil War, Tom Holland is a great actor. It was wonderful in those movies. Even though I don't like Spider-Teen, you, you guys already know from my last video on Spider-Man, I'm not a fan of Spider-Teenager. But I have hope that we are going to get to the adult Spider-Man, eventually. Unlike comic book characters on the page, the actors in the movie and real life, they certainly age. And I would love to get to Spider-Man and Mary Jane being together. Oh, oh sorry, by the way, uh, not buying the Michelle Jones twist near the end of homecoming i mean I, I sorry nope not buying it i'm hoping to get to the sinister six the symbiotes the goblins craven's last hunt and maybe some obscure villains like hydro man oh and the crossovers like avengers 3 and 4 maybe in like 10 years we could finally get the passing of the torch 
or, or maybe in 15 years. We, we could transition from Peter Parker to Miles Morales. Hell, I'll even cross my fingers for a Miguel O'Hara Spider-Man 2099 movie set in the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh my god, could you guys imagine Doctor Doom on screen in Marvel 2099 uh, taking over the United States and becoming president, like in the comics, and where he appoints Spider-Man Miguel O'Hara to, um, to his cabinet, I think? Like, he appoints Spider-Man to a political position um, in his new presidency, Doctor Doom. But but I'm more excited about a, a Marvel 2099 a movie with Spider-Man in it than a Spider-Man 2099 movie made by Sony. Uh, okay, but I, I am digressing quite a bit. So let's go to this news about Kazo... Is his name Kaz or Kazo? Yeah, Kaz. He, step, he might be stepping down at Sony because Sony Entertainment, including Spider-Man, as the title says, might be up for sale. Okay, let's read the story here. A lot of industry... Uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to um, put words in the article. Let me just read it um, word for word. Industry experts are speculating Sony's film and television assets could be headed for sale, following the news that Kaz Harai will step down from his position of chief executive, where he'll be replaced by chief financial officer Ken Ichiro Yoshida. You know, the only Yoshida I'm familiar with is Shune Yoshida, who works at the Sony PS4 uh, division. He has a Twitter. But I've never heard of this Kinichiro guy. Yoshida is not re- is reportedly not too keen on the entertainment business, one industry observer told Deadline, leading to speculation Sony is, quote, ready for a sale. Sony stock at closed at $51.99 Friday, up 6% amid speculation the changing of the guard might open the door to a potential sale of the company's entertainment assets, which included coveted big-screen IPs like Spider-Man and Ghostbusters. Studio insiders have re- reported no evidence of a shifting corporate strategy under Hirai's number 2. According to Deadline, who reports Sony will continue to look for opportunities to grow its film and television business, whether through acquisition or merger. There has been no discussion of a sale, the site adds. Um, the rest of this article goes on to talk about how Yoshida is described as a numbers guy with a cautious outlook, and when he, and he sees Sony as a technology company. Sony back in the day used to be known for uh, televisions, cameras, all sorts of electronics. That also includes Blu-ray players. But, you know, not not a lot of people talk about Sony or buy anything from Sony nowadays. I, I don't even see that many uh, televisions with the Sony logo on it in my personal life. Um, the One of the best things that Sony, one of the only few good things that Sony Pictures is known for, or Sony overall, is that deal they made with Marvel back in the day. Well, not back in the day, but um, the deal to include Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I believe the deal was that Marvel it, it, Marvel makes the movies. Like, Sony licensed the character to Marvel. Marvel makes the movies in a shared custody deal, but Sony distributes the movies and makes money, and I think Sony foots the bill for the Marvel Studios' production of Spider-Man. Uh, did you follow me on that? Be- because I can explain it better in the comments if you ask me. Still, to see Spider-Man fully come back to Marvel means a lot of positive things for the character. No more shitty spin-off movies, or no more no more movies without Marvel's direction. That means we probably won't have to see Venom. I, I, I don't know if I like the idea of a Venom movie without Spider-Man. Tom Hardy, he, he could be a great actor. I don't know why he believes in this project. And I'm not going to say he shouldn't, I just don't know. I don't think a lot of people know. I'm not interested in a Venom movie without Spider-Man, and some people are alleging that Tom Holland, Peter Parker, is going to be in that film as a cameo. But Spider-Man with Venom... Venom... How do I say it? I, I I gotta find a way to convey this. Venom is the substantive result of Spider-Man bonding to that costume that Eddie Brock wears. The Venom suit is an alien. It's not created in a laboratory, contrary to what Ultimate Spider-Man wants to say. No. Ultimate Spider-Man the comic. No. 
it came from outer space. Sp Spider-Man puts on the black suit. The black suit absorbs its knowledge about Peter um, through its memories, and then Peter casts it out, and then it bonds to a journalist that Spider-Man uh, Spider ruined his career, and Eddie Brock becomes Venom. And while I appreciate Sony wanting to do something with the Venom property and go back into those classic Spider-Man stories with Venom seeking revenge against Peter Parker by stalking him and Mary Jane and using the symbiote's knowledge and turning it against Spider-Man. I just... I don't, I don't think they should be making a Venom movie at this time. Venom, to me, is a character that grows over the course of several episodes or several movies. Like, we're, we're getting Avengers 3, Avengers Infinity War this year. Why doesn't... Wh why can't Spider-Man just go into outer space find the costume, find the Venom symbiote, find the living alien, put it on, use it in the next Spider-Man movie to take out villains, uh, get rid of it near the end of the film, have it bond to Eddie Brock as a cliffhanger, and then in the next film, which would be a standalone Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man deals with the repercussions of the symbiote. Instead, we're getting the seemingly classic Sinister Six built up, starting with Vulture, and then Shocker, and then Scorpion, between Homecoming 1 and Homecoming 2, whatever they're going to title it, and we're getting this Venom movie just thrown into the Marvel Cinematic Universe because of whatever Amy Pascal has to say about it. I don't trust her, and I don't think a lot of you should. I think Kevin Feige, if there's one person that has earned the trust of Spider-Man in a movie, it's Kevin Feige, the head of Marvel Studios. That's why I'm asking myself, that's why I'm leaving my head scratching with the question of who's asking for this movie? Who's asking for a still a, a shot, a, a picture of Tom Hardy looking like Eddie Brock without any trailer or any sort of material to, to make people to proponents of this Venom movie. We know nothing about it, and I'm just not that interested. I'm really not. I, I, I don't feel that Sony inspires confidence when making these Spider-Man spinoffs. And speaking of spinoffs, if you really want to know my opinion on this matter, I think that Spider-Man would be best suited to a Netflix series. That's why I'm hoping Marvel gets him back. Um, every time Marvel regains the rights to their characters, like Punisher, Daredevil, Ghost Rider, Luke Cage, etc., we always get a 13-episode ep set of a Netflix series uh, created for that di um, distribution platform, and, and mostly by Marvel uh, Entertainment. L yeah, so that's my personal opinion with Spider-Man coming back to Marvel fully, and here's hoping that he does. I'm crossing my fingers that this happens, because I, I do like the character. It depends on whoever's writing him that makes me care about his adventures or not. And aside from having movies, like two or three or four movies over the course of several years, almost a decade, why can't we have a Netflix special? I think it'd be great seeing Tom Holland be Spider-Man and it's like you're taking your flagship character, you're you're si you're pushing him back from films to television, which I think would ultimately serve Spider-Man better. Because if if you're the Avengers, if Marvel wants to push out the Avengers as a property, put them in the movies, and put Spider-Man, you know, the street level character that he is, in a Netflix series, have like five seasons with him, and then transition back to movies. If you want to tell this huge climactic final battle between Peter Parker and someone, and then um, give the lead to Miles Morales, do it that way. Personally, I think I've we've seen enough Spider-Man on film to the point where we're all questioning why we should have to wait years and years for a new movie when we could get a new television special that takes place in the world of the movies. And Spider-Man isn't like a mysticism type of character where you need all these different special effects. Um, you don't need a symbiote invasion in a Netflix series. You don't need magic. Spider-Man is a down-to-earth character, and you could tell... You could like you could have a good budget. You could tell stories during the day or during the night. I, I just think that under Marvel's direction, there would be a lot of positive results for the character, uh, a lot more than what than what we're getting now with Homecoming and what we certainly got before with Amazing Films one and two and the same Raimi movies. Every time Marvel makes a movie, they tend to be successful at it. I would say above average. 
Not to mention that they're going to be pretty busy with X-Men and Fantastic Four if that Disney Fox deal goes through completely over the next year and a half. I mean, we'll probably hear something by 2021 or 2020, and Fantastic Four and X-Men, uh, Marvel has another universe of characters to, to, to transition to movies and TV series under their direction, under their banner. So... They're going to be doing a lot with the with their upcoming acquisitions in the next de- um, several years or so. They'll have plenty of movies for the next 20 years on top of the movies that they already announced for the next 20 years. So uh, they're going to put they're going to make X Men great again, and they're going to make Fantastic Four great again. I can't believe I'm using that that line. Hashtag making Spider Man great again, making X Men great again, making Fantastic Four great again. Oh my God. Uh, 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 okay, I, I know people are a little touchy with that um, with that quote, with that saying, so I, I, I'm going to just end the video right now and, you know, before I go on uh, rambling. So I'm looking forward to this news. I want to see what happens and I'll be able to convey my thoughts a lot more, the, like, the further we go into this. All right, see you guys next time.